Today we're painting up some Primaris Outriders and they are not going to be blue. Welcome to Zelda's Off Gaming. My name's Lachlan Linton Keen, and today we're diving deep into the Indominus box as we paint up a Primaris Outrider. This video is the beginning of my Blood Ravens journey. Yes, that's right, we are painting up a huge Blood Ravens army here on the channel. I fell in love with the Blood Ravens as a teenager playing hours and hours of Dawn of War, and I've always wanted to paint up a huge army of them. And with the massive plans we've got for narrative crusade content here on the channel, it is time to finally get the Blood Ravens on the tabletop. Now over the next couple of painting videos for the Indominus series, I'm going to be looking at a couple of different Blood Raven schemes. We're going to start off with the simplest scheme today, blending some more conventional techniques as well as using a bit of contrast paints to get a really easy battle ready scheme. And then we'll step it up in the next couple of videos and look at some more advanced techniques. And then once I've kind of put together that collection of schemes for the Blood Ravens, I'm going to choose which one I prefer the most and what's going to be the best for me putting together my army of Blood Ravens. So first up, of course, is to get this model assembled. So I've clipped off all three of the Outriders from the sprue and got them all glued together. But before I grab any primer, I needed to do a little bit of a test scheme. Because we're applying the Flesh Terrors Red contrast paint as our main vibrant red layer, I wanted to work out which primer to put underneath that because, of course, with contrast paints, the effect changes dramatically depending on your primer. So I dug out this old little box of classic, uh, very vintage Space Marines these days, and I tried to prime with Lead Belcher, with the Mechanica Standard Grey, and with a very light grey, similar to the Grey Seer, but this one is the Tamiya Flat Surface Primer. So you can see with the Lead it's got a bit more metallic, the grey is a bit darker, and then we get a much more vibrant colour. But I w basically wanted to have a bit of an experiment here, so I brought in some different washes. I did a little bit of edge highlighting with different reds on different parts of the model until I could really lock down what my scheme was going to be, and I ended up deciding that the bright grey was where I wanted to work from. It gave the red the most vibrancy, and I can always push that back a little bit with washes, and so that was what I decided to prime all three of the bikes with. So with the prime down, it's time to smash into our big workhorse layer, the Flesh Terrors Red Contrast. This is the foundation of all of the red armor plating, and there is so much red on this model. Obviously, all of the armored carapace of the bike itself, that ablative plating that goes over the wheel housings, and then the main body as well itself, that armor plate wrapping up over the top of the bike. The chassis itself has some red plates that go underneath the Marine, and then of course the Primaris Outrider himself has that red armor, so we want to apply that all evenly around there. We want to be relatively controlled with this layer uh, when we're going near areas that are going to get extra contrast layers, so make sure you don't spill any red onto the tires because they're going to get Black Templar, and we do want to, of course, not get any on those shoulder pads. But all of the main undercarriage chassis is going to be base coated later with a metal, so you don't have to be too worried about keeping that application clean down there. With that first layer of contrast down, sometimes you'll get a little bit of mist separation with the pigments and some kind of weird effects, particularly on broad flat surfaces. So what I like to do is go over the top of that first layer with a glaze of 50-50 contrast medium and flesh terrors red. This has the added benefit of kind of darkening the red up a little bit and the glazed layer of glaze contrast over pure contrast really smooths out all of the contrasty imperfections and kind of blends it all together and makes the contrast look a little bit more more subtle. So I applied that glaze all over the red layers, particularly focusing on the flatter areas of the armor paneling to smooth out those dodgy transitions, but it's also useful on the marine itself. Some of the uh, kind of larger arm sections, and every now and then there'll be a really sharp ridged highlight that the contrast will have pulled away too much, and you can almost see prime underneath, so it's good to apply that glaze over those regions too. With those two layers of Flesh Terrors red down, we can see the red's got the really nice kind of vibrancy that we want as our starting point. And we're going to finish off all of our other contrast layers first. And our next one is the Black Templar contrast. We're going to apply this all over the tires. Obviously, they are the big kind of black region. Uh, and just make sure you don't accidentally get any of that Black Templar on your red contrast, because that will be irritating to clean up. And then there's a few areas of black detailing on the bike. There's the seat underneath the Marine himself and a few little components in and around that chassis, and then we have some serious black detailing all over the Marine himself. He's got the edging on his shoulder pauldrons, the Aquila across his breastplate, and then of course the bolt gun in his hand and the two bolters that are mounted to the bike on the front. 
Because the grey prime isn't particularly dark, you will sometimes get a little bit of a light separation through the Black Templar on larger flat areas like the holster and the belt pouches, so these may need a second layer. With the Black Templar down, it's time to work on our largest remaining base coat, which is of course all of the metallic components. So I'm going to grab some lead belcher and apply a nice even coat pretty much over everything that is still primed at this point. That's all of the metallic details on the bolt rifles, the various metallic armatures and components. There's a little uh, a kind of spool around each of the wheels that joins with the axle, and then we have the main undercarriage of the bike. All of the various mechanical components and of course the big exhaust pipes. The metallic flakes of Citadel's lead belcher can make this paint thicken a little bit over time, so I like to bring in a little bit of medium and apply two thinner coats to get some really nice metallic finish on these parts that isn't obscuring any detail. So that is a workhorse layer and it does take a little while to do and it needs a little bit of brush control to make sure that you don't accidentally get silver on any of your red or black elements. But now that's done, the model is really starting to look painted. We've got one little base coat left and that's our bone element. So I'm going to bring in some bone white from Vallejo or your Shabti bone from Citadel will work fine. And we're going to apply a nice smooth even layer of bone all over the shoulder pads and the helmet as well, which is currently sitting on the sergeant's belt. Then once that's down, I'm going to grab the skeleton horse contrast and apply that nice and evenly over all of those bone elements. Sometimes this will be a little bit thick and it might pull a bit too much so I just get a little bit of contrast medium on my brush and almost kind of wet work and thin it down on the model itself. This is particularly useful on the shoulder pads because you don't want to turn those brown or too dark. You want that bone coming through. You really just want to push the deepest part of the skeleton hoard into the recessed detail of the pauldrons and let the bone really come through a, a thinner component of that separating contrast. But don't overdo it, you don't want to accidentally push the skeleton horde all around the model. So with our primary layers down, it's time to start working on getting this red to a finished state. So of course we're going to start doing some edge highlighting. Now I'm bringing in two reds here in successive stages. I'm going to start off with a darker red, the gory red from Vallejo, and then move into the bloody red as that lighter highlight. So essentially what we want to do is get a nice uh, kind of pointed, fine tipped brush and move through all of the edges of the armor plating, accenting all of those details, following all the lines and various contours. There's so many hard edges obviously on the vehicle armor as well but then on the marine we want to do the same thing following the curves of those various armor plating accent the various lines we don't have to worry too much about accidentally painting into the recessed details because we will come back with a wash in just a second so just make sure that you get a nice broad accent of that first red and then of course when you come back with the second pass of edge highlighting with the brighter red we want to highlight a little bit less of that material and just get the crisp to create that natural gradient of brighter color when those edge highlights are down, you can really see that the model is starting to pop. That armor plating has got so much more definition than just having the contrast layer down on that plating, and it's really starting to sing now. It's going to look really, really cool when it's finished. But what we want to do is, is give it just a little bit more contrast, a little bit more definition by uh, having some separation between the big, broad mid-tones and all of the different uh, recessed details through the armor paneling. So what I'm going to do is just apply, apply a null oil wash all over the red armor, the vehicle, the marine, everything. Just get null oil nice and evenly. You do want to make sure it doesn't sort of settle on the broader flat region so it has any kind of weird swirling, uh, but you do get some really nice application through the recessed details here. And this just gives that armor its final little pop. And we have, we're not gonna go to any more lengths than that. That's, that's the red armor finish. This isn't a super advanced scheme, but it's just a, a few quick steps that can get a really great finish on that armor. One thing to note is when this null oil dries, don't be too alarmed if it looks a little bit sheeny and the flatter areas don't look amazing. Once we matte varnish it, that will knock all of that out and we'll see the beautiful red edge highlighting and the contrast layers underneath and then that null oil in the recessed details. Up next, I'm just going to grab my bone white from Vallejo once more and just apply that quite in sort of an overbrush style with a bit of a, a kind of beat up old dry brush just to really return the center of the shoulder pauldrons and the hard edges of that helmet to that brighter bony color. And that leaves the skeleton horde tint just in the recesses like we were talking about before, which gives some lovely definition, but gives that lovely bright bone look to those components. 
So the model's really coming along, but of course our Black Templar needs some further treatment to really accent that. So what I'm gonna do is mix up a gradient of grays and blacks on my wet palette. I'm just gonna bring in some Abaddon black and any kind of neutral gray. I'm using Stonewall gray in this case. I did a really big kind of showcase on this technique uh, in my Blade Guard Veterans Guide, which I'll link down in the description below and throw up there on the card. But you can have a look at that kind of process of wet blending the cloth on the Blade Guard. Whereas on this model, we've just got a lot of little hard edges, the shoulder pauldron details, of course the tires as well, and then the Aquila and the pouches around the belt. So what we do is we mix up about a, a mix of 80 to 20 black to gray, start nice and dark, and do the same edge highlighting process like we did with the red, and then come back in with a little bit of a lighter gray and really accent those edge details to make the black have a nice pop. So time to continue our work on the metal layer. I should mention I also applied Nuln Oil all over this layer when I was doing the red armor. So this metallic has already had some Nuln Oil down and now I'm just gonna bring in some Seraphim Sepia and apply that directly to the exhaust vents just to give that uh, metallic component a slightly different tone to make it look like it's being heated up by the exhaust and it just gives it a little bit of a kick and a foundation for the grime we're gonna put down in a second. The final element for the metallics is to bring in some storm host silver and we're just going to go around and edge highlight quite crisply all of the hardest sharpest points on these models to give them a really bright pop. We've got our base, we've got our shade, this is our simple highlight, that classic three phase. So all around the barrels of the bolt rifles on all the various little uh, ammo belts and hard edges of the metallic components, just a little kick with the storm host silver really helps those metallic uh, elements read when you look at the model. To finish the weathering on those exhaust vents, I'm just going to bring in some Typhus Corrosion, which is probably my favourite paint from Citadel. I love it, it's a great technical paint, and just splodge a whole bunch of that on, really grime it up, and it's going to look way over the top, and you'll be going, oh, lucky, you're insane! But then we just come in with an old brush and pull away the vast majority of that material. It leaves some really nice streaks and stains, looks like a build-up of silt and, and, and uh, kind of grime and exhaust fume that's baked onto the side of those big exhaust vents. And if you've got too much and the brush isn't enough, you can even just bring your thumb in and kind of drag it over, which really forces it into the recesses, but leaves the stain over that metallic layer underneath. Now the sergeant has a bare head of course, so we're just going to do a pretty classic simple treatment here on his skin tone. I'll bring in some Kislev flesh, put that down all over his flesh tone as a nice base coat. That goes down really nicely over the light grey, uh, so you won't have any trouble kind of getting that on as a, a nice even application. Then I'm going to bring in some Reichland flesh shade and just apply a nice wash all over that skin tone. Make sure you don't leave it sitting too heavily in the recesses of the face. We just want it nice and evenly applied over that skin and then I'm going to come in and do my kind of classic application of highlights. So on my wet palette I'll bring in a little bit of the Vallejo Bone White and mix that into some Kislev Flesh starting off with about a 50-50 ratio and then I'll go across all of the facial features. Obviously this is a bald head as well so we want to accent all of the ridged features across the top of the skull leaving that darkened washed Kislev uh, in most of the recesses so the cheekbones, the jaws, the eyebrows, the ears and across the top of the skull just putting down lots of little lines across the top of the skull that we can start to build up. And then I'll uh, work back in that wet palette, bring in a little bit more of that bone white to make a lighter highlight and accent all of those areas once again with a little bit less coverage to provide that brighter highlight on the skin tone. So with the skin tone done, I just threw down a couple of eyes with a dot of Abaddon Black and Scar White, and then that model is done, and it is time to put down some transfer. So I got some custom Blood Raven decals printed up at a local decal printer here in Australia. I need to apply a gloss varnish all over the model before applying these. That way I've got a glossy model surface and then a glossy varnish. As always, I'm sure you guys have done water transfers before. Cut out the transfer as thin as you can, throw it in a bit of water, pull it away on the model, put some water down to help position it and move it around and then uh, pull away any excess water and then uh, let that fully dry uh, and then we can come in and apply a matte varnish all over that model and you'll see that the matte varnish just knocks back all of the sheen from those washes the skin has gone a lot flatter and more blended and of course that big red armor uh, is looking a lot nicer now that null oil is down and now it is time to dive into basing now I'm absolutely falling in love with the new basing product from the geek gaming scenics range 
range, which is called Grim Dark City Rubble. You can buy it from my online store, which I'll link in the description below. It's a super easy application. You just grab some of the base ready fast drying glue and apply that all over the base. I gave it a quick prime with gray first and then let that get tacky for about 10 to 15 minutes till the edges start to go clear. Uh, and then what I'm actually gonna do is apply this material to the base before I glue the model down. Uh, Cause I wanna be able to do some really cool kind of positioning, get all the rocks around the sides and leave a flat region for him to be driving over. And then I'm gonna come in, put some plastic glue on the base of the bike with those kind of hexagonal pins and then glue this sergeant on a bit of an angle. You'll notice I've positioned his arm. I've kind of forced it up from the easy pose fit. So it looks like he's kind of riding his bike on a bit of a lean and shooting while he drives. Uh, and uh, it just creates a, a little bit more dynamic. Uh, and then I'll just come back in with a skewer and kind of fiddle around with the back of the rubble that's sitting on the base behind the wheel to create a bit of a trail as if he has been driving and bring some action into the base. And I just think that is looking absolutely splendid. The final step is a quick application of some sealant spray to lock in all of the pigments and grout components on his base. And then he is ready to take the fight to the Necrons in the 41st millennium. So scheme number one for my little Blood Raven project, our contrast method, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think I managed to get a nice smooth application of the contrast, even on those bigger flat surfaces with that kind of contrasty glaze combination. But the, the edge highlighting is too subtle. I, I kind of wasn't brave enough uh, I didn't use uh, a kind of broad enough edge highlight with my initial pass and then that didn't allow me to get that kind of uh, thicker, crisper edge with the bright pass. And I also think, and my mate John kind of pointed this out, that perhaps mixing in some orange would have been a little bit nicer for a good kick, a little bit of a brighter color as well uh, to really make that pop. So that's going to be something that I focus on uh, with our second scheme uh, because these kind of this is a series of me exploring, uh, I guess, finding the way I want to paint my Blood Ravens and showing you guys a range of different levels of skill and techniques that you can create a Blood Ravens army. So this is kind of our most basic. We're going to look at a more classic method, bringing in some sort of non-contrasty, pure kind of old school techniques all on their own and then we'll look at something even more advanced and kind of sexy and special later on. So that's the Primaris Biker. Uh, I love the models though. They're really cool. Uh, definitely digging them. Uh, what's up for us next? Next we're going to jump into Necron Land. Uh, my, my new Necron paints have just arrived from Emerald Hobbies down in Victoria uh, so I can have a look at all the new Canoptic glazes and armors and alloys and all that sort of magic and we'll have a look at putting together a scheme for the new Dynasty uh, and then we'll switch up and keep smashing out some Blood Raven stuff. So heaps of content coming on the channel. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us recently, whether you came over from the Goober Town collab or you just found us through all this 40k stuff. Definitely subscribe if you're new around here and let me know down in the comments what you're doing with your Indominus box, what you'd like to see me do, if there's units you'd like me to focus on, uh, and feel free to join us on our Facebook page as well. Cool, well, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.